six, a helping hand with your land. Good morning, my name is Eddie here at Messix. Today we're going to talk about fuel filters for a Kubota SVL90-2. We're going to look at a uh, genuine Kubota manufacturer's filter versus a locally purchased uh, aftermarket filter. First thing we're going to do is I have a scale set up. We're going to stick these on the scale and see what they weigh. Uh, I have the scale set to ounces. We'll put the aftermarket filter on. And right now we're at about 12 ounces. Now we'll take that filter off. We'll put the manufacturer's, the Kubota filter on. And that takes us up to one pound, about 16 ounces. So we're not trying to tell you what filter to buy. We're just here to show you the difference between the filters. Just because this filter will screw onto your machine and will work doesn't mean that it's the right filter for your machine. And we're going to show you some of those differences here as we go through and cut them open and look at what's on the inside. All right, so now we've got our filter in the vise. We got the filter opener on here. We're going to cut this filter open, open it up and see what's inside. Top of our filter came off. Inside here, got an O-ring, uh, screen, silicone holding the, the mesh down in, so we'll have to make another cut. So here it is, took us two cuts, but we were able to get it out. Notice the amount of packing goes through. Uh, they have the inlet in here. There's also a small foam type filter down here in the base. Uh, so now we'll move on and we'll open up the uh, cheaper aftermarket version and see what's inside there. All right, so now we've got our uh, cheaper aftermarket filter clamped into the vise. Got the filter cutter on it. We're gonna cut this one open, see what it looks like inside so we can compare the two filters. So, inside the cheaper filter, notice how they're using like a much lighter glue. Uh, also notice that the amount of paper is different. Uh, I did notice inside the cap, there is still your O-ring inside there, just like we had on the Kubota filter. So here's the inside of our cheaper filter. Only a little bit of glue. Uh, if you remember on the manufacturers, the Kubota filter, so much glue on there that it won't even cut. Uh, we were able to pop the cheaper filter, the material straight out of it. Also while I'm holding the two right here, look at how dense this is all wrapped together versus this one. The Kubota filter is registered at five microns. Uh, the cheaper filters, uh, some of them are at seven microns, most are at 10. Uh, personally, I would believe this one was probably a 10 micron. Uh, so you can see that you're getting twice as much filtration out of this, give or take, uh, just between those two. So the other thing I wanted to point out here is, is remember when we took the Kubota off, there's this small foam type filter on the base. We went ahead and got the rest of the stuff out of the bottom of the cheaper filter can. And we have this steel plate. And then we have the plastic ring that the uh, sensor screws fast to. But notice there's no other... Uh, there's no other foam filter or anything else in the bottom of the can. So you are missing that extra little bit of foam filtration 
that you're getting from the manufacturer. So what I did is I took a uh, pair of snips and I cut off that piece of uh, housing, steel housing, away from the glue. Uh, this is the seam right here where they put the two pieces together and glued it down, Kubota filter. Uh, so I'm going to try to see if we can get that to open up. I'd like to unroll it a little bit if we can, uh, just so we can see what it looks like as we start to unroll it. So, as you can see here, it's open at the top. This is where your fuel's coming in. They actually have it glued together down here at the bottom, forcing the fuel to go through this filter, not allowing it to just run down through these channels that it's building. We have the Kubota one unrolled. It's laying here on the floor. We'll unroll the uh, cheaper version. See how they have this one put together. So now that we're here in the middle, just like on the Kubota, they do have a little bit of glue forcing the fuel into the filter so that it can't just go straight down through. Notice here at the end, the Kubota filter was glued fast. We're glued together. Uh, we're not really glued fast to the plastic in the center. So the other thing I wanted to point out is on the Kubota filter, remember how we had like two pieces that were basically glued together to make that filtration where this is one piece that they have put into an accordion effect that they have folded in half. So we'll lay it out. We'll see what we get on the floor. So we've got them both laid out here on the floor. Uh, not a significant difference in length. The OEM one is only about 12 inches longer than the cheaper version. Uh, if you all can notice, the OEM version is about an inch and three quarters wide. Cheaper version is about two inches wide. Uh, and those are the big things you can see from here. What we're going to do now is we're going to take and cut a piece of this out. Uh, take it up to the workbench so we can talk about it and, and actually get close so that you can see some of the other differences. So what we've done is, is we've taken about a five inch piece out of each. Uh, we can start with the cheaper version. Again, piece of paper folded in half, accordion style here, but if you look at the spacing, uh, it's about a quarter of an inch for every one. So we'll look at the Kubota one now. We're getting uh, just about two of those pockets in the Kubota filter versus every one in the, in the cheaper filter. So we're going to try to open up this Kubota filter here a little bit and see, uh, see what we have. We've got this uh, very fibrous material inside. It's almost soft. It's almost like cotton. Uh, you can feel it as we pull that open. Uh, you can also see here if I can get this little piece to pull off. See how we're opening up those little passageways and see all the like fibers in there that are made to catch the contaminants in the fuel. This is why this filter is, is a, a 5 micron filter. Uh, it is a better filter. It does a better job of filtering, and this is why you're getting all this stuff in here to catch all these little pieces that are in the fuel. Let's see if I can get this side to open up here. It's the same on both sides. So you're getting all this surface area to filter your fuel. And Basically what we're trying to do here, what this filter's job is, is to keep your fuel system going into the engine clean. Uh, all these engines now are all common rail. Uh, they are very susceptible to dirt, uh, which is why Kubota chose to go with a 5 micron filter. 
which is finer than anybody else on the market. All right, so all of this filtration helping to keep these, which is a, an actual SVL 90-2 injector, uh, common rail system. These are what generally suffers if you do not run an OEM filter. Here at Messix, we have changed out several of these injectors. Uh, some have had OEM filters, some have not, but this is the this is the end result. These injectors are very expensive. Uh, every SVL 90-2 has four. Uh, so this is what you're protecting. Uh, it might cost you a couple dollars more to get an OEM filter, uh, but if you have to pay for even one of these injectors uh, at the cost that they are, your filter is a much better choice. Regular service intervals, change your fuel filters often, use the OEM filter. Alright, I hope you enjoyed our quick video on filters, comparison between an OEM and a cheaper aftermarket version. Uh, hope we were able to point out some of the key things here to help you make an informed decision. Uh, it is worth, in my opinion, an OEM filter. Uh, it will save you money in the long run. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, questions about pricing, uh, servicing, service intervals, uh, anything along those lines, please give us a call. 1-800-222-3373. Uh, you can visit us online at messix.com or stop into any one of our five locations. Thank you.